A Geocentric Explanation of the Seasons by Malcolm Bowden We are all familiar with the heliocentric model of the solar system, with the Earth spinning on its tilted axis once a day and travelling around the Sun in one year. Here we have the Earth tilted at 23.45 degrees to the ecliptic path it travels around the Sun. The planets also rotate around the Sun on the same plane. We see the Sun in the northern hemisphere in the summertime, with the Earth tilted towards the Sun so that it is circling the Earth at an angle of 23 degrees above the equator all the time. Now, six months later, when it is winter in the north, the Earth is still tilted at 23 degrees but it is now away from the Sun, which is circling the Earth 23 degrees below the equator. So you can visualize the whole process in this simple model. How does the geocentrist explain the seasons? There is a perfectly rational explanation, but it is a little complicated to imagine. If we keep the Earth stationary, and make it upright, then the plane of the ecliptic will be at 23 degrees to the equator. Here we have a simple diagram showing how the whole ether moves round the Earth once a day, carrying the ecliptic plane, the Sun and the planets with it. As the Sun slowly moves round the ecliptic, it becomes lower in the northern sky until three months later it is moving around the equator. We are then in the autumn months. A further three months and it is at the southern end and we are in winter in the north. Let us see this in some animation. Here is the sun at the top of the ecliptic giving summer to the north. Now allow the ecliptic to rotate around the Earth for one day. We see here that during the summer the Sun stays at the same position on the ecliptic which is doing the daily rotation around the Earth with all the planets also. When it returns to the same position 24 la hours later it has actually moved a little around the ecliptic almost one degree. All the planets have moved slightly also. After three months the Sun will have moved round the ecliptic 90 degrees. The ecliptic continues to revolve but now the Sun is level with the equator during the autumn months. Six months later the Sun will be at the bottom of the ecliptic and it will be winter in the north. We can put these two clips together to try and make the process clearer. Here we see the Sun going round the top of the ecliptic in one day, but at the end of each day it is moved on almost a, a degree further, and three months later it will be down a quarter of the way round the ecliptic level with the equator. And that is when we would get the autumn season. A further three months and it will be at the bottom of the ecliptic. Now the reaction of many will be, isn't it simpler and more logical to adopt the heliocentric model which is much simpler than the seemingly contrived and convoluted model presented by the geocentrists? Certainly, it must be admitted that the heliocentric model is more easily understood and scientists like to have simple, elegant models for their theories. However, nature itself is far from simple. I remember reading about biologists deciding to examine everything about a simple bacteria, its DNA, metabolism, reproduction, etc. What they actually found were layer upon layer of increasingly complex levels of interactions between its components and chemicals, even in a seemingly simple organism such as a bacteria. 
Similarly, Bohr's model of the atom is sufficient for the illustration of basic chemical reactions. But the atom is actually very complex, as they are now finding out. And they are still discovering more amazing complex cross-codings of the DNA and the metabolism of the animal body. So when we turn to astronomy, we should be prepared to find that the actual facts are vastly more complex than we are led to believe by the simple diagrams of the solar system, the strange activities of light particles, and much else. But even more important is that a major scientific problem arises if the geocentric model is rejected, and this is that there are four experiments that all demonstrate that the Earth is stationary and at the center of the universe. They are as follows. 1. The Michelson-Morley experiment that showed that the Earth was not traveling around the Sun at 30 kilometers per second. The Michelson-Gale experiment that demonstrated that the ether was passing across the face of the Earth at one rotation per day. 3. Ares failure experiment that proved that the Earth was stationary and that it was the starlight that was revolving around us. And fourthly, the Sanyak experiment, which proved that the ether really did exist, and this demolished Einstein's theory of relativity. In addition, the paper by Barber and Bertotti showed mathematically that it was the mass of the stars that was producing the Coriolis effect, turned the pendulums and produced the equatorial bulge on the Earth. I must point out that the four important articles shown in red are never mentioned in any university course for physicists or astronomers because they present a completely different geocentric model of the way our universe works. This evidence must not and cannot be dismissed by critics of geocentrism. I have produced videos on YouTube that explain all these different effects and links to them can be found on my website. Go to the bottom of the page for a full list of my 22 videos on a wide range of subjects creation versus evolution, geocentricity and true biblical counselling.